I believe, you know, my new tagline is, I believe you can make a difference in your life if you have a consistent, everyday, persistent, without quit, enjoyment of the pursuit of your potential. And when I came up with it, obviously it resonated with your life. And there was a saying when, when I originally watched the movie, and I didn't know you at the time, and it was before that I went through my own bankruptcy, my own bottom that I hit. Uh, it was, you know, life gives me, it, you can look at it as a setback or is it a setup? And I, when I watched the movie and then when I read your book and I got to, you're a setup guy. You know, everything is that, this is just setting me up for something bigger and greater. I, I live in a world that's way too big for this. Oh man, man. Can, can you tell me where that came from? Well, you know what, first of all, let me say this about, uh, about that. It's interesting you should mention that. Um, I, like yourself, have some core things that I believe in. And that idea that you just shared with me, um, people talk to me a lot of times about hope. And hope's a beautiful thing, but I have to always ask people, well, what's the nutritional value of hope? Right? <laughs> what's, you know, you're going to tell your children you got hope for dinner. Right? Again. <laughs> right? Uh, hope's a beautiful thing, but it's always more important to be able to have a plan. And not just a plan, but plan A. What is plan A? And the best plan A's always have something I call the C5 complex. Your plan A has got to be clear, concise, compelling, consistent, and committed. You've got to have plan A. And you have to always be mindful, and I say this in all sincerity, uh, plan B sucks. <laughs> it does. I mean, you think about some of the, um, the biggest names in their respective industries and worlds, those people were committed to plan A. I mean, I know you're a big NBA fan, as I am. Um, Michael Jordan's got six NBA championship rings because he was committed to plan A, not plan B. Uh, Oprah Winfrey became the queen of all media because she was committed to plan A, not plan B. Uh, whatever your politics are, Barack Obama served two terms as president of the United States because he was committed to plan A, not plan B. Plan B sucks, man, right? And um, something else you said earlier that makes me think of something that I share with people is this whole thing about owning it. I have to explain to people all around the world why do you spell happiness with a why? <clears throat> that why is there to make us all mindful that it is you and your responsibility, you and your opportunity to create the life that you want for you and your family. That's why we spell happiness with a why. If you really analyze your beliefs, you'll change them. I had a friend one time, I, I was trying to figure out where do beliefs come from? How do you, because all religion and all science will tell you you got to believe it. William James from Harvard, 1900, he said, believe in your belief will create the fact. So belief is an interesting word. you got to believe it. And uh, I was having lunch with a mentor one time, and he said, our belief system is based upon our evaluation of something. Frequently, if we reevaluate a situation, our belief about that situation will change. It was like bells were going off my head because I was trying to understand belief. How do you change your belief? But he told me through reevaluation. And so I started to evaluate myself and reevaluate what I was doing. It took me nine and a half years, but I figured out why I changed. And it was the repetition of information. Thank you. You're in, in sports, you yep. know. It's repetition. Yep. Repetition, repetition. Well, but practice doesn't make it perfect. Perfect practice makes you perfect. There's a big difference. Great point. And so I found that the part of our mind that controls our behavior is not the part of our mind that gathers information. School deals with the part of your mind that gathers information. And so we gather all kinds of information, and if we can remember it, they give us a test, we pass the test, we get the degree, and we're educated. That's not education at all. That is gathering information. Education, as Hill pointed out, comes from the Latin educo, meaning to reduce, to develop, or to draw from within. We have genius in us. We have absolute perfection in us. 
And what we have to do is learn how to tap into that, to let it out. But we have a part of our mind that controls our behavior, and that's where a paradigm is. And the paradigm literally controls our behavior. I don't care what you're doing. If you're not altering the paradigm, you're not going to improve your results. Many people may or may not know, you can actually name your alarm. So my alarm, I actually, I don't put it by my bed. Why would you condition yourself to put something as important as what's going to help you get up in a place where it's easy for you to make an excuse, right? So my phone is across in another room for two reasons. Number one, I have to physically get out of bed. And number two, Amy's going to kill me if that goes on for too long. So <laughs> I, am, I am sprinting to turn that thing off. And the first thing I see on the screen is my mother's name, Jan Fishman. My mother passed away 11 days before my eighth birthday. So my fire, if the first thing I see is Jan Fishman Newman, you think I'm hitting that snooze button? When I'm, I'm 42 years old, my mother passed away at 38. I've been given four extra years, one day at a time. You think I'm gonna hit that snooze button? And so for me, I've conditioned myself to connect to what drives me to recognize you will not make an excuse. Man, yeah, I knew about mom, but I didn't know the phone piece. I didn't know that. And then, and then I'll, I'll show you, it's actually right, to, right here, seeing journal. Once again, it's all the environment that we set up. So one of the other things I do every morning, this is my burn, my burn journal. I write down Janet Fishman Newman Legacy, Uncommon Amongst the Uncommon. So one of the first things I do is I literally write, so it, to me it's not enough, this is not easy. I think people want to hit the easy button in everything that we do. We have to condition our minds. Mental toughness is not easy. People think, oh, I, I have mental toughness. You have to condition your mind. Your mind is the most powerful weapon that you have. It's a muscle. So Ed, you and I, we can work out our muscles, right. but the reality is this is a muscle that far too often people don't condition that muscle so i've conditioned it to see my mother's name but then i've conditioned it to write down and to deeply connect to the burn once i do those two things it's go time